All right, guys, so I'm back with one more video. This is probably going to be the last video I do on this for a while. I'm kind of burnt out on uh, this whole thing, but I'll show you what I have here. So it may not be apparent, but if I turn it off, uh, you'll see, yeah, the arms do still move. Now, I'll explain to you why the arms are still moving. So whenever I'm in the relaxed state right here, I'm actually dynamically I'm creating a dynamic additive and applying it only on the upper body, but I'm excluding the arms. So the clav the spine, the clavicles, the neck, and the head are included in that dynamic additive overlay of the locomotion onto this uh, pose, which is why it gives the illusion that the arms are moving back and forth. And the reason why is because the shoulders are moving back and forth on the locomotion animation during the running. And I'm carrying that over to the shoulders on this pose. However, the upper arm, the lower arm, and the hand are unaffected. Uh, so if we do copy motion, you'll see it adds motion back to the upper arm, lower arm, and hand. And so it looks a little bit more dynamic. I'm thinking this may have been uh, the particular use case that they may have used this for. Now I made some changes. For one, you'll see that the rotation scale is disabled. If you turn rotation scale on, what happens is the virtual bone you're copying the motion onto will be rotating. Uh, and so you'll get some uh, funky movement. And the reason why is because the hands are caught, the hands are following the virtual bone. And since the virtual bone is rotating, now the right hand is also rotating. And of course, the left hand is following because I'm using IK, uh, which is affected by the right hand. So you could introduce some of that into it and you'll get a little bit of a different uh, movement more. Maybe you, you feel that's a little bit more dynamic and you like that. So you could turn that up a little bit. Now, as far as the translation offset, you doing it in this way, the translation offset uh, isn't really going to have any effect on it from what I can tell. So I don't really know why. Maybe it's because of uh, the setup I have in the copy motion. Uh, like I said, I, I don't really understand what's going on in here, guys, as far as uh, that, what, what they're doing on the back end, I am not very uh, sure about. So... I can tell you, though, that basically what's happening is, well, I had it set up as the L pose for both the component space and base pose reference. That was an oversight on my part. Uh, that's why I'm redoing this video. So in theirs, it was actually the, uh, it was actually the pre-layering uh, catched pose, cached pose right here that they were actually using as the base pose reference. And the reason why the L pose causes the arms to go way up here and then you have to scale it down and, and reorient it and stuff like that is because the uh, L pose, so I'll show you. So for example, in this situation, the L pose is right here and the end pose is back here. And so when we're copying from uh, one space to another, the dynamic additives get calculated based off of the uh, f based off of the copy space right here. From my understanding, this is how it works. So whenever you assign a copy space, say spine five, this is spine five bone, and this is spine five bone on this guy, and so. Uh, the hands are way down here on this one, but they're uh, but they're way up here on on this other one, and so you can ignore the fact that the spine is farther forward and rotated at an angle because it's not going to translate like that. It's going to translate based off of the orientation of the bone. So if this is forward and this is forward, then uh, 
Yeah, I'm not going to go into it. It's going to be confusing for a lot of people. Uh, but basically, the fact that the arms are, are way out here instead of way down here on this one is the reason why they end up way up here whenever we copy it over uh, to this one because it's basically getting where this one is right here and then it's applying that difference uh, to it again which puts it way up here. So the reason why it doesn't do that with the uh, motion matching pose is because the uh, motion matching uh, pose has the arms in a uh, similar position and so this is a neutral pose and this hand is going to be passing in and out back and forth uh, from where that neutral pose is during the motion and it's hard to tell because of the blur but if I do a sl uh, slow mo say 0.2 uh, then you'll be able to see it a lot clearer. And so if you just consider the offset of that during uh, offset of that red from the green during the uh, or from the spine orientation itself, then it's not actually a lot of movement and it's happening locally. So whenever we apply that offset locally it'll apply it uh, from where it is right here and if we come in here and we scale this value down then that amount of offset that's applied is lessened uh, to a usable uh, extent so So that basically, it just allows you to uh, copy the motion over and scale it down so that it's actually suitable for your situation. And it adds more dynamic motion back into, say, the arms. Uh, whereas before, if you, uh, the arms would be a lot stiffer. Like you can see that right arm especially. I'm not actually applying this to the left arm. I'm only applying it to the right arm. Uh, so if you watch that right arm, you see how stiff that right arm is. Now you'll see how not stiff it is. So it makes a big difference. Uh, here it is uh, not stiff and here it is stiff. So it makes a big difference in that situation where you're overlaying uh, or where you're layering and you lose some dynamic motion in that limb this allows you to add that dynamic motion back into it uh, better and in a more controlled manner so yeah i base i believe that's basically how they were using it but i i, I may still be wrong i don't completely no but i will if you go and re-download that project you'll have this updated version uh, i'm going to go ahead and leave this here and i'll probably put a little note here uh i don't know maybe i won't put a note there but yeah you're not supposed to use that one right there because of the fact just because of the way it gets applied additively Oh, it affects it in a negative way whenever you're using it uh, as an additive. So anyway, guys, that's basically uh, the rundown on on it. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you. So I'm getting the hand R. That hand R right here is being uh, grabbed from the collected bones. Let me turn off this this fan because it's like really loud so I'm actually not using that anymore I'm just using the hand door so I was experimenting with spine with the spine bone and I realized something if if the bone is included in this collected 
bones list. And that's your source bone. Then it actually acts differently. The, for example, if I exclude this from the collected bones, then the translation offset will start working. I don't know why that is. I think it's weird. But if I do include it, then I get better results, I think. Uh, but the translation offset doesn't work. So I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit confused by the results that I've gotten. Uh, none of it really makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, maybe because I just don't understand what they're actually doing on the back end. But yeah, I'm sure somebody will come along and uh, probably uh, make some more progress on the work that I've done here. And that's the reason why I'm doing this video. I'm hoping that somebody else uh, is able to make more sense of this than me. This is my understanding of it. And you'll see right here that I'm just switching this. If we want to aim, I'm uh, loading in the aiming pose. And if we don't want to aim, then I'm uh, applying the resting pose. And you can apply whatever logic to this you want. You can make it a layered, uh, a layered based system or whatever. But this was just uh, to showcase how you can get some results out of this. And I'll see you guys in the next video.